What is up? Finally got this damn hydrogen torch in a situation where I could build something with it. And I promised a couple of guys that I would do a step-by-step -step build on an extremely effective waste oil atomizer or a siphon nozzle as some people call it. This one should work both as an atomizer and a siphon nozzle. The difference between the two is that an atomizer often requires pressurized oil, whereas a siphon nozzle will draw the oil through induced vacuum. And I believe it's uh, the Venturi effect that causes this. So let's get to it. These are the parts you're gonna need. Basically what we have here are some quarter inch tubing some pieces that I have uh, purchased from Lowe's. The only piece that you will not be able to get from Lowe's is this small popper tube. Now, this is a brass tube actually, I take that back. What we have here is a quarter inch MIP with a 3 16 tube coupling on it. But what I've done is repurposed it. We're not gonna use it for that purpose. This is basically for a 3 16 copper tube, very small tube. Just so happens that this uh, piece of brass tubing that I have fits in this thing perfectly. And the size of that tube, we're looking at uh, 2.33 millimeters on that. At any rate, uh, where am I at here? I wanna leave a link in the description for this bag of uh, hobby metals because <clears throat> this thing is extremely useful. So I'm gonna leave a link in the description, fellas. If you uh, look up this uh, bag here, if that's a little too pricey for you, there is another version, but I don't know if it has a piece of tube long enough for what we're going for. They also sell these individually, but this stuff is very hard to find. So just click the link in the description and it will take you to this area of Amazon. The things you're gonna need for this build is a micro drill bit set. You're probably not just gonna be able to buy the right size. You need to go to Harbor Freight or something like that. Find one of the little micro drill bit kits. You're gonna need a quarter inch FIP 1 8 barb, a quarter inch T, a quarter inch elbow with a quarter inch FIP on one side and a, I believe it's a quarter inch copper tubing coupling. This here is, I believe a one inch FIP. This it's just a quarter inch cap. This is a quarter inch fit with a 3 16th copper tubing coupling that's being repurposed. We're not gonna use the end of that. And I have a piece of copper pipe or a copper quarter inch tubing with a quarter inch fit 1 8 barb, which will be the air connection, the oil connection. We will be using this particular piece but we're going to cut off the barb bore out the hole in our 3 16 coupling that will enable it to receive the barb at which point we will nickel solder or with an anti monitor or anti money alloy the barb in position and i'm going to show you how to put it together and how to tune it We'll also be looking at these diagrams to get a basic idea of what it is that we're trying to accomplish here. Essentially, the essence of this device, or all of these devices, is quite simple. What we're trying to achieve here is a configuration like this, but for purpose of illustration, we're gonna do a flat one. I don't wanna confuse a bunch of people. Basically, what we wanna do is get an oil spear inside of a hole and you want it to be about right here, just barely peeking out the surface of the hole. You want air to be flying out that hole, the annular orifice that's created by the oil tube, and you want the oil to come out through the center spear. So we have oil here and air here. This configuration that I've drawn also works. The position of this nozzle can be optimized by tuning the device. And the way you tune it is you observe the flow rate of oil inside of a eighth inch piece of tubing or a quarter inch piece of plastic tubing like this here. You would just sit there and modulate the position until you got the fastest speed of oil that you can get. You don't have much time to do it, but there's usually plenty of time there. And essentially, 
don't pay attention to that. This is a different design. Essentially, we're gonna be passing air up through the bottom of the T, and oil will be coming through the back of the T. This drawing here is for somebody else that doesn't illustrate exactly what we're doing, but it takes a lot of time to do this stuff, so I figured it'd be good enough for the purpose of illustration. This is a needle valve that was repurposed, I believe. Yeah, that's exactly what that is. Today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit easier to do because the needle valve build required the convergent configuration, which was very hard to pull off. And getting someone to be able to reproduce that is just not cut and dry. So today we're gonna to be doing the nozzle that just looks like this. It basically just has a little hole in the cap with an oil spear. And we're gonna find the perfect position of that oil spear. You want the hole inside of this cap to be just barely bigger than the oil spear. So what we've done is we've taken a drill bit that is the exact same size of this particular piece of tubing here. It's not the exact same size, it's real close. Let's take a look at it. It's 2.26 or 2.25 and I believe this is 2.23, but that's good because typically drill bits drill a hole a little bit larger than what you're going for. I doubt I'm gonna be able to find a better target than that. So we wanna start small. We just want that air hole to be just barely bigger than our oil spike. If we go too big, the airflow required to properly run this device will be enormous. It will work but you only want a large void there if you're gonna be running a machine that say over 100 kilowatts. Let me give you an example. This particular device here runs at 100 PSI's, 4.1 cubic foot per minute of air, and it would draw 4.2 liters per minute, giving us about 41 kilowatts of heat. I'll put a link in the description of this device operating at that flow rate, but essentially, to achieve those parameters, you have got to make the air annular orifice just slightly bigger than this so that the velocity is increased tremendously, like almost supersonic speeds. Okay. I'm no Johnny Q99, that's for sure. <laughs> I gotta give it drill for us running guys. I've got two of them, but they're both broke. I am using Bridget nickel bearing solder. This is a lead free, very high quality stuff. Comes with a uh, high quality, high temperature flux. This is some really good flux. As you can see, 427 Celsius is extremely hot. I wanna say that's at least in the seven to 800 degrees almost. Maybe 600. I'll leave a link in the description for this stuff. If you've never tried it and you're looking for a good solder, some great stuff right there. Now we're going to adjust the tip. Okay, fellas, if you have trouble getting your oil spear to become concentric, I'm gonna show you a little technique here. I have a brass bar stuck into the side of this T and we're going to slowly compress it inward until it presses that tube where we want it to go. This bone is horrible. Get close ups. I'm going to keep pushing until it pushes on that rod, centers it up in our hole there. Oh, I overdid it. Damn it. <laughs> I'm gonna have to try to back out just a touch. Okay, so there it is. That's a little spike that I stuck in the side of the unit. 
And that pulled us to a perfectly concentric position. Okay, fellas, we have a little test stand here. Got the nozzle set up, and I did a little bit of pre-testing, and I'm gonna find out I was right. You want that, uh, the oil spear in the middle to be flush with the face of the air discharge. And kind of like what I've got drawn here, that turned out to be the optimum position. We got the most spray. Now it may not atomize the most at that position, but that pumps the most and that's what we want. Um, you'll see a vena contracta when you're at the optimum position. I'm gonna go ahead and shoot some footage of this thing operating. I have added some uh, orange food coloring so that we can see the fluid traveling through the line. I have the nozzle currently in the optimum position. I'm gonna start the airflow. Almost instantly, the water travels in place. You can see how beautiful this thing's working right now. Actually, we're not at the optimum setting. It's moved on it just a little bit, I think. Move it. You can see. Okay, let's try that again. I've reduced the pressure to about 75 PSI. Hoping we can get a better look. And this thing works amazing. It works almost like a high grade unit would. I'm gonna try and find something to help us observe this a little better. That thing is just putting out a beautiful mess. Incredible. Now, the camera's not gonna be able to see it as good as I can. I, I'm looking through the screen and I'm not seeing the same thing here. A little bit of an invisible zone. That doesn't help much. That might help a little if I turn the lights off in this area. Okay, that was only at 50 PSI. Let's crank that back up to 100 and check it out. Whoa. I'm getting messed it all the way back here. Can't see it in the camera. I need to learn some lighting skills. I'm gonna try and turn the light on a little bit differently. 